Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of World Extract. I'm your host, Benedict Liu, and as always, I'm joined by The Edge. In the Northern Hemisphere, where we're located, it's currently summer, which means it's that period of the year where the sun is shining, the temperature is up, and the sweating is nonstop. That's right, not only am I miserable and hot, I'm miserable and moist. Why do people like summer again? <laughs> All right, travel. And speaking of travel, today we're unveiling our end of summer special, Wood Extract Travel Edition. Since we still can't go anywhere, we're going to be bringing the anywhere here. Today, we'll be going international to the land of the rising sun, Japan. Fun fact, Edge and I, we actually had a trip this summer planned to go to Japan. We were gonna go hike Mount Fuji, shop in the Ginza district, visit the Cat Islands, and do, oh, so much more. We had to cancel it, unfortunately, and beneath my cheery tone and pleasant demeanor is actually crippling disappointment. Aww. Yes, yes, I know. The audience didn't come to listen to the trials and tribulations of their charming hosts, though there are many. <laughs> what they came here to see is you and our guests for this week. So back to the matter at hand. What's the one thing that people love about summer travel the most? That's right, Edge, food. The stuff by which we humans structure our entire day. And Japanese food is some of the most delicious with dishes like curry, ramen, and sushi. And our guest for today is one of the most important ingredients of Japanese cuisine. I'm of course talking about katsubushi. This, my dear audience, and you'll excuse my pronunciation, katsubushi, also known as bonito flakes, is used in a variety of Japanese cuisines. It's used to make dashi, a broth basis for soups, and also as a topping for foods like okonomiyaki. Its distinct umami flavor derives from the fact that it's made from dried, fermented skipjack tuna. Now, how does fish go from fish into flakes? Well, I think that's a tale for sample prep. So actually, right now. Now, it's time for sample prep. Like I was saying before, audience, Katsubushi undergoes some pretty interesting sample prep to go from fish to flakes. Traditionally, the fish is gutted and filleted to remove the belly, excuse me, the fillets are then placed into boiling water, and then after boiling, the fish are then smoked for up to one month, alternating between smoking and resting to let condensation rise to the top. After the smoking, the fish is then sun-dried and mold called asper aspergillus glaucus culture helps to ferment the fish and to dry it out even further. After all this, the final product resembles a hard block of wood that is traditionally shaved with a wooden plane to get the shavings that you see right here. Nowadays, you can buy the pre-shaved katsubushi so you don't have to ferment the fish yourself. Now, as far as sample prep goes, that's a little arduous and tedious, right, Edge? I think we can do it a lot simpler. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our sample holders, the Q-cup, unscrew the base, insert one of our Q-discs, I'm using our S1 stack, place it into the bottom of the Q-cup, making sure it's laying nice and flat, Screw to assemble the Q-cup. Then I'm gonna take my pre-weighed sample. I'm just going to go ahead and insert it into the Q-cup. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of our Q-screens in order to keep the sample submerged in the solvents, place it on top and push it through the opening. And just like that, we're done. I'll go ahead and place the Q-cup into the rack with a vial right beside it. Come up to the front. Get that loaded method. Press play. Press start. And now I'll let the edge run and I'll see you all in a few minutes. All right. And now that the edge has finished running, we have our extracted sample and our extract. You can see here that our extract is nicely filtered and cooled filtered due to that cutis that we put in and cooled from the cooling coil that's in the back of the edge. Analytes that you might be looking for in this extract include things like mycotoxins or fat. Well, Edge, I know it's not the same thing as going abroad and being American idiots on international soil, but I still had fun today. I'm sure you did too. I kind of do wish that we got to go see the Ghibli Museum and eat ramen in Tokyo, but I suppose it's better to be safe. And thank you, audience, for joining us for this week's episode of World Extract. For more information, please visit CEM.com.
Yeah, I know. I'm still really disappointed, Edge. I really wanted to eat my way through Japan and, you know, have all the good food they have there. What's that? Below the bench. <gasps> Mochi! Aw, you're the best, Edge. <laughs>